الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله حملا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله we continue we continue going over the tremendous advice from the Fadil al-Shaykh al-Allama Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan Hafizahullah ta'ala that advice or the Shaykh's advice المرأة المسلمة to the Muslim woman we had concluded the last class while speaking about an issue and an affair that will close down the roads of fitna an issue and an affair that will close down the roads of fitna and then the Shaykh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he went on to get into another issue from those issues to close down the roads to trials and tribulations. To close down the road of temptation, trials and tribulations and calamities. And that is, as the Shaykh he mentions, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, وَمَنْ سَدُّ الطُّرُقُ And from the ways of closing down of the roads and the paths and the means مُفْضِيَةً لِلْفِتْنَةً Those which lead to the fitna and from the ways of safeguarding and protecting and from closing down the roads and the means to temptation, to temptation and calamities and trials. مَنْعِ الْمَرْأَةَ أَنْ تُسَافِرَ وَحْدَهَا بِدُونِ mahram Is that the Muslim woman, she has been prohibited from traveling by herself without a mahram. She has been prohibited from traveling by herself without a mahram. Before going further, we need to understand what constitutes a travel. You have from the ulama, those who mention that such and such a distance, this is considered to be traveling. And they differ in those distances. Now, But the qawl rajih the proper opinion, the correct opinion from the ulama, is that there is no specific distance which identifies traveling because all of the distances that are mentioned, and there are many, there is no textual proof so as to establish that this is the distance, this is the head of traveling, that this is the distance, this is the limit for traveling, that once you go beyond these particular amount of miles or what have you, then this will equal a travel. There is no textual proof which substantiates a specific distance. But rather what is correct is as Al-Allama, Imam, the Imam of Sham of our time, Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Albani, Imam Al-Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions that there is no specific distance for traveling. There is no specific distance for traveling. Because this is from those issues where it will go back to the urf. It will go back to the urf of the people. 
So the traveling is what is considered to be traveling by the Muslims of a particular location. That if they see that if one goes from this point to that point, then that's a travel, then that's a travel. Sheikh Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he mentions, he says that the traveling is not that what you'll say about it. I'm going to go run an errand and come back. Naam. I'm going to go run an errand and come back. He said that anything that is beyond that, anything that is understood beyond that, that which you will consider or that which is considered to run an errand and come back, Naam. he said that this will enter into what is meant to be traveling. And the ulama, they mentioned that traveling, this is something, this is one of those rulings that will change from time and place. They will change from time and place. Meaning that in certain eras, that which is considered to be a travel, uh, may not be a travel in other eras. So for example, the Sheikh Imam Al-Bani, he mentions two distances, two distances, uh, in Syria, Naam, that during the time of Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah were considered to be a travel. And when the Sheikh, he mentioned these distances, Naam, it was, or he asked those in attendance, is this seen as being a travel today? And everyone unanimously they said, no, today this is not seen as being a travel. To which the Sheikh, he elaborated that this is from the traveling and what is the definition of traveling? This is from those fiqh rulings, from those Islamic jurisprudence rulings that will change from time and place. That will change from time and place. Because the definition of travel, it will go back to the urf of a people. It will go back to the urf of a people. Naam. So it's important that we know and that we understand this. The Shaykh, Shaykh Saleh, Al-Fawzan, he mentions that from the roads that cuts down or from the ways and the means of cutting down and preventing the uh, fitna, preventing fitna occurring, trials, tribulations, temptations, so on and so forth. Is that what? Is that the Muslim woman, she has been prohibited to travel alone without a mahram, without a mahram. And inshallah ta'ala, for now, we're going to leave mahram untranslated because the shaykh, uh, shortly, he will explain and give us the definition of what is a mahram. Naam. So for now, we'll leave it untranslated. Although this is a term that is well known, we'll leave it untranslated and we'll explain, uh, when we come to that portion, as the shaykh he explains what and who are the, who is a mahram. The Shaykh says, لِأَنَّ الْمَحْرَمْ إِذَا كَانَ مَعَ الْإِمْرَأَ فَإِنَّهُ يَصُونَهَا فَإِنَّهُ يَصُونَهَا وَيَحْمِيهَا وَيَقُومُ بِمُصَالِحِهَا Because if the mahram is with her, then he will protect her, he will safeguard her, and he will يعني, establish, you know, establish uh, what she needs. Naam, and, 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 and he will bring about that which is beneficial for her. Naam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا يحل لمرأة تؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر أن تسافر مسيرة يومين إلا مع ذي محرم. Is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to travel a distance of two days except that she has with her a mahram. In this hadith, Rawahu Imam Al Bukhari, the Sahih, Min Hadith Abi Sa'id Al Khudari. And this hadith has been collected by Imam Al-Bukhari inside of his collection of authentic hadith. And it's from the hadith of Abu Sa'id Al-Khudari. Naam. 
it is important that we understand the reality of this issue. Now, because in this narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Masira yawmain. The distance of two days. The distance of two days. Naam. Wait. It is not to be understood as some people understand that I can travel the distance of two days. I can travel the distance of two days. Naam. And then that it is permissible. Because bila shak wa bila right, with the invention of the modern modes of transportation, a person can go from Florida to China within two days. A person can go from Florida to China within two days. Ma'am. So are we to understand because it doesn't take two days to get to China from Florida or from New York? Then this means that it's not a travel. Now, and then of course we understand the answer to that is no. It's also important to understand, and this is what Imam Nasruddin al Albani he used to stress often. Now, and likewise the ulama they stress is that it is not, it is not sufficient. To take one hadith or to take one ayah and then try to come to a conclusion about an affair. Yani you can't just take one hadith or one ayah. But rather you have to take all of the ayat, all of the verses, all of the ahadith naam, upon that particular issue and then now bring them all together. So that you understand correctly this issue. And this is a good example. This here is a good example on what is traveling and how far could a woman travel without a mahram. Naam. Because in this narration, it says two days. Naam. Two days. Then there comes, wafir riwaya, then there comes in another narration, that has been collected by Imam Muslim inside of his Sahih, inside of his collection of authentic hadith. And it is from the hadith of Abu Huraira. From the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Where the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Yawm Walayla, a day and a night. So we have another narration that states that it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah in the last day to travel the distance of a day and a night. Naam. Sheikh Fozani mentions with riwayah and inside of another narration, inside of another narration, it mentions Naam and that she travels, period. That she travels, period. Naam. And this narration is also collected by Imam Muslim. Is also collected by Imam Muslim. And it is also narrated by Abu Huraira. So, I want you to write this in your notes. You have two narrations. Both of which are collected by Imam Muslim. Both of which are narrated by Abu Huraira. One narration says, a day and a night. The other one says, yani, travel period. Travel period. Ma'am. Now that we have all of these narrations together, we can properly understand what is intended. We can properly understand what is intended because this one here that says "en tusafira," Sheikh Fuzani says "bidun al tahdid." It is not specified a limit. There is no limit that is specified. 
Naam, there is no limit that is specified. So it's without any specific time frame. Bayit? Fal maqsood. So how do we understand all of these narrations? Are we to say, oh, these narrations are contradicting one another? No, of course not. So how do we understand these narrations? Naam? Fal maqsood an al mar'a la tusafir wahdaha la tusafir wahdaha bidun al mahram. What's understood is that a woman, she cannot travel, any travel, by herself, any without a mahram. She cannot travel any travel by herself where she doesn't have a mahram. So the ulama, they explain this. What this means is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was stressing the fact that a woman has to travel with a mahram. Naam. So if we put it for you another, another way, as the ulama, they mention, it is, uh, so we understand what? That la yahin lil mar'a is not permissible. For the woman, the mra'a, huh? the mra'a, to miru, bila, wal yawm al akhir, and to safira masira, that it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah on the last day to travel the travel the distance, huh? masira, yawmaini, bal, yawm walayna, bal, and to safira, illa ma'adi mahram. This was understood. Is that it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah on the last day to travel the distance of two days. No, rather of a day and a night. No, rather it's not permissible for her to travel without, except that she has with her a mahram. Naam, this is what we understand from it. Huh? Masirat al yawmaini. La bal yawm wa layla. La bal an tusafira bidun al mahram. Aw illa ma'a di mahram. That it is not permissible. When you bring all the narrations together, you understand? It's not permissible for women to travel the, the distance of two days. No. Rather, a day and a night. No. Rather, that she travels, period, without a mahram. Naam. فَإِنْ سَافَرَتْ And it's important. فَإِنْ سَافَرَتْ بِدُونِ mahram. And if she were to travel without a mahram, فَهِيَ عَاصِيَ لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Then she will be Disobeying Allah and disobeying His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Murtakiba lima harama. Murtakiba lima harama Allah. She will be embarking upon that which Allah has made prohibited. Wa mu'arida, wa mu'arida nafsaha lil fitna, and she will be exposing herself to fitna. Wa hada am fi kulli ahwal wa fi kulli azman, and this is general. Naam, this is general. In every situation and at every time. So d- despite the situation and despite the time, if she were to travel or travel by herself without a mahram, then she will be disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And of course, what is meant is under ordinary circumstances. What is meant is under ordinary circumstances. If there is a tragedy, if there is a darura, then that's something that is different. If there is a Pressing situation is darura, yani is daruri. It is something that is beyond the normal, the scope of what is normal. It is an, an, an emergency, for example, naam, then, uh, then, uh, naam, then, uh, this is an exception. So for example, if the woman is, if she becomes hurt, may Allah ta'ala keep all of us safe. May Allah jalla wa'ala keep all of us safe. But if the woman was to become hurt, for example, and the nearest hospital, was a distance that will be considered a travel, ma'am, then it's not said, no, she can't go to the hospital until a mahram comes to accompany her to the hospital. But she's in a she's in a dire situation and she's bleeding, so on and so forth, but she has injured herself severely, so she needs medical attention immediately. Ma'am, so we don't say no 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 she wait. Because if she waits what's what'll happen? She'll bleed out, she may die, so on and so forth. Ma'am the injury may, 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 may become so severe that it cripples her for the rest of her life, or it may be a mortal wound which will kill her. So we don't say, no, 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 she has to wait till a mahram comes, brother. No. In this situation, what? Then she's allowed to, uh, yani to go that distance. Why? Because it is necessity. It is necessity. It is an emergency. So we're not speaking about that which is an emergency. We're talking under ordinary circumstances. Under ordinary circumstances, if she were to travel without a mahram, then she will be committing 
a sin, she will be sinful and she will be exposing herself to fitna, trials and tribulations. Ma'am? But the Shaykh says, وَأَمَّا مَا يَقُولُهُ بَعْضُ النَّاسِ He said, but that which some of the people, they say, and it's important that we know this doubt. Because some of the people, you'll hear them, they say, أَنَّ الْمَرْأَ إِذَا سَافَرَتْ مَعَ جَمَاعَةَ النِّسَاءَ فَإِنَّ هَذَا يَكْفِي عَنِ الْمَحْرَمِ they say, but if a woman were to travel with a group of women, if a woman were to travel with a group of women, then this will free her from needing a mahram. This will suffice her from needing a mahram. The Shaykh says, فَهَذَا الْقَوْلِ He said, this statement, مُعَارِضُ لِقَوْلِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, this statement, it contradicts the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحل لمرأة تؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر أن تسافر إلا مع ذي محرم. He said this will contradict the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah in the last day to travel except that she has with her a محرم. Except that she has with her a mahram. وَجَمَاعَةُ nisa And a group of women, a group of women, لَسْنَ مَحْرَمًا لِلْمَرْأَةِ A group of women, they do not constitute a mahram for a woman. They do not constitute a mahram for a woman. Mahram المرأة معروف. The one who is a mahram for a woman, this is well known. This is well known. The Shaykh, he says, وَهُوَ And he is. So it's important, I want you to write this definition down. Who is a mahram? The mahram, مَنْ تَحْرُمُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ who, The mahram is the one who it is prohibited for him uh, to marry her from the men. Is that man who is prohibited for him to marry the woman? بِنْ be, due to a blood relation that prohibits him from marrying that woman, or sebab mubah, or due to a permissible reason. Okay. So in general, in general, I want you to write this down. The definition for a mahram, it is that man who it is prohibited for him to marry that woman due to lineage or due to a permissible reason. Ma'am, so a mahram, who is he? He is that man who that it is impermissible for him to ever marry that woman due to lineage or due to a permissible reason. Ma'am, but I want you to add that to the definition, although I forgot to mention the first time, it's impermissible for him to ever marry her. He can never marry her, ever. Ma'am, can never marry her. Okay, so again, who is the mahram? It is that man who was impermissible for him to ever marry a woman, to ever marry that particular woman, Naam, either due to relation, uh, lineage, either due to lineage or due to a permissible reason. Clear? And then the Sheikh he brings examples. Examples for the first, Nasr, the Nasr. The examples for a nasab, then it says, the, uh, yani the relations, the lineage, the lineage. An example of lineage will be, ka'abiha, like her father. Her father can never marry her, under any circumstance. Na'am. Wabniha, or wabnuha. Na'am. Wabniha. Ka'abiha, wabniha. Na'am. And also, like her son. Her son can never marry her. Na'am. And when it says ka'abiha, it, it, yani it goes up, meaning like her father, her grandfather, her great grandfather, so on and so forth. Naam. And when it says Webniha, it goes down. Naam. When in Nezanet, it goes down. So her son, her grandson, her great grandson, so on and so forth. Naam. Wa akhiha, and her brother. She can never marry her brother. Naam. Likewise, her nephews, yeah, so on and so forth. 
وعمها and her paternal uncle she could never marry her paternal uncle meaning her father's brother وخاليها nor could she ever marry her maternal uncle meaning her mother's brother now so this is an example of nasab those who she can never marry due to blood relation due to blood relation naam bay so now what is meant by sabab mubah or by a reason that is permissible or by a reason that is permissible so for sabab mubah i want you to draw a line and then have two branches coming off of it because there're going to be two reasons right the first of those reasons the first of those permissible reasons they will be uh, as the sheikh he mentions musahara musahara naam will be a due to a relationship due to a, a permissible relationship that she has with that particular person or due to a permissible relationship that person becomes haram for her that due to a permissible relationship that person subsequently becomes haram for her to marry ever so the first is what musahara naam that do that this is the permissible relationship that due to a permissible relationship that person thus becomes haram for her forever an example of this will be ka abi zawjiha like the father of her husband or her father-in-law a father-in-law it is impermissible for him to ever marry his daughter-in-law ever ever naam ever so as long as they both live whether her and her husband stay married or not she can never marry her father-in-law ever she can never marry him. او ابن زوجها او the son of her father or the son of her father نعم uh, excuse me asif or the son of her husband or the son of her husband نعم وابن زوجها the son of her husband she can never marry him okay and then that goes down so his son and his son you know you understand so her stepson her great stepson you know uh, her great grand stepson what have you all the way down she can never marry any of them so this is the first those individuals who is haram for them to ever marry the woman due to a permissible relationship like her father-in-law or her son-in-law or her father-in-law or her stepson now or a steps likewise son of sons in laws same thing she can never marry the son in laws as well but another reason this is the second from the reasons of the permissible reasons will be rabaa Rumi sakani or breastfeeding, now will be due to sakani. That if the woman and a man share the same wet nurse, they were both suckled from the same woman. Now, whether that woman was one of their mothers or a third party, it is not permissible for them ever to be married because they are relation due to sakani. Now, and that. which is made haram by lineage will be made haram by suckling naam so for example or the dalil for this is the statement of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yahrumu min ar-rada'a ma yahrumu min an-nasab that what is prohibited from suckling is the same that is prohibited from blood relations 
what is prohibited by milk relations is the same that's prohibited by blood relations. So, for example, if she were to have a brother from suckling, then he is a mahram for her. Naam. And likewise, his son will be mahram for her. And so on and so forth. Naam. And likewise, his son is mahram for her. So, just like those who are mahram, if he was her real brother, how the mahram will extend? It will extend in the same manner for, for her milk brother. For the one who she uh, is, uh, they, they both suckled from the same woman. Naam. And likewise, subsequently, those who are affected by this milk relationship. Those who are affected by Rada'a. Naam. Tayyip. فَمَحْرَمِ الْمَرْأَ So therefore, the one who was a mahram for the woman, who was rajul, الَّذِي تَحْرُمُ عَلَيْهِ بِنَسَبْ أو بِسَبَبْ مُبَاحْ وَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ هَذَا التَّحْرِيمُ عَلَى تَأْبِيدِ يعني دائما The Shaykh, he says, so therefore, who was a mahram for a woman? It is the man who is prohibited to marry that woman due to blood relationship or due to a permissible reason and it is incumbent that this prohibition is a prohibition that is forever meaning it is continuous it does not end that it is haram for him to ever marry this woman he can never ever marry this woman Naam. because there are certain prohibitions that are temporary they are not forever so the shaykh he mentions he says يَخْرُجُوا بِذَلِكَ Tahrim al muaqqat So therefore there will there is excluded from this that prohibition that is temporary. Mithil like Yani Ukht Zoja, a woman's sister. Naam, a woman's sister. So for a man, his sister in law becomes haram for him what? While he's married to his wife. While he's married to her sister. Naam. But if her sister were to pass away or they were to get divorced, then it will be permissible for him to marry who used to be his sister-in-law. You understand? So this type of prohibition, then it is what is temporary. Likewise, the woman, as long as she's married to her husband, is not permissible for her, to, you know, of course, to marry her brother. Because right? the woman can only have one husband. You understand? But... Uh, in the event that her husband dies, then it's permissible for her to marry who used to be her brother-in-law. So this prohibition is what is temporary, it's not forever. Naam. وَكَذَلِكَ الْعَمَّ Likewise, the maternal aunt. A man, he cannot marry his, 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 his wife's aunt. He cannot marry his wife's maternal aunt. But if the wife were to pass away uh, or they were to get divorced, then he can marry his his wife's aunt. And this is very important. Especially here in this culture. Because in a lot of people's minds, the maternal aunt yani, uh, of the of the of the wife, then she's like mahram for the uh, for, 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 for for her niece's husband. So she may touch him, she may hug him, yani, stuff like this. It's not permissible. Why? Because this woman, her tahneem is only temporary. So you're not mahram for her. So you cannot see her uncovered. You cannot travel with her. You cannot touch her, be alone with her. So on and so forth. Why? Because she's and it's still haram for you. You understand? Likewise for the woman. It is not that the man's uncles should be hugging on the wife of their nephews and so on and so forth. Why? Because they're not for her maharim. Because what? Because the prohibition of marrying is temporary. It's temporary. Well, likewise, uh, the khala, and likewise, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the maternal aunt of his wife. All of this is what is temporary. It's temporary. Well, I can have the tahneem mu'aqqat. The shaykh, he says, this prohibition of marrying them, it is temporary. It's only temporary. فَلِذَلِكَ لَا يَكُونُ مَحْرَمًا so therefore, it is you are not the man will not be a mahram He will not be a mahram for his sister-in-law. He will not be a mahram for his wife's sister. He's not a mahram. Huh? 
So women can't say, oh, uh, yani, my sister, she has, yani, come in from, yani, wherever. My sister at the house, right? I need you to go pick her up, and bring her here. Yeah, because why? He can be in, he can't be in the car alone with his sister-in-law. Yeah, the, the, the in-laws, the Prophet Sallallahu like this, yani, uh, uh, the sister-in-law, brother-in-law, so on and so forth, the Prophet Sallallahu described them as what is death. Is death is, 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 is more of a fitna, is more of a fitna than other than them. Now, I mean, I want, I want to understand this, because people sometimes are very lax when it comes to the sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws and so on and so forth. But for the men, listen, the standpoint why this woman is such a fitna, now, more than another woman from the street, is one, due to, there are many reasons, but from them, as the Ahl al mentioned, due to what? The closeness, the closeness and relationship that uh, will be there between the likes of these family members, right? So, of course, you may intrinsically and, and even and, uh, not even on purpose know more information about your sister-in-law than you will know of any other woman walking down the street, right? Because because she's a close family member, right? So even uh, yeah, uh, 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 unintentionally, you will learn things about her that you don't even want to know, uh, but just because of what because she's a close family member. You understand? You may be privy to what she's going through, her you know, situation, so on and so forth. Even stuff you don't even ask about, but because of the closest in the family, uh, you you in a relation, you 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 were over here and you will be privy of some of these things. Now, this is one reason. Another reason is that what siblings, yeah, you know, and of course siblings in most cases are what are very similar in the way that they look. Siblings are similar the way you look. Not saying that they always look alike, but they're in the same ballpark. You will find mostly siblings in the same ballpark, right? So obviously, obviously, this ballpark is favorable to you because your wife is from that ballpark. You understand? Obviously, this ballpark is favorable to you because your wife is from that same ballpark. So that increases, that increases what the danger of her sister. So now, what if a sister looks like her? More, yeah, right? more, more dangerous. But yeah, and I don't think I have to explain more about that. So the sister-in-laws, and likewise, the same could be said about the brother-in-laws for the wife. This is a fits not. They are death. They are death. Naam. So you have to be very, very, very careful and remember these things that you are not, brother. You are not mahram for your wife's sister. You're not mahram for her. Right here. For, uh, so he's not a mahram for her. He's not a mahram for her, although right now he cannot marry her. He's still not a mahram. He's still not a mahram. Why? Because the prohibition, that which is stopping him from marrying her, is only temporary. It's only temporary. So the Sheikh says, uh, uh, he's not mahram for her he's not mahram for her because this tahrim it is temporary the sheikh he says and likewise you will not be a mahram for her maternal aunt nor for her paternal aunt for the same reason why because the prohibition is temporary this is who a mahram is one who can never marry one who could never marry that woman, ever. Naam? But you. Wa amma jama'a min al-nisa. Getting back to as far as a group of women. Naam? For less na mahraman. Then they are not mahram for the woman. Kadalika. Al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ishtarat. Al-mahram l-safar. Al-mar'a. Fi kulli al-ahwal. He says, so thus the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stipulated that there has to be a mahram to accompany the woman in all travels, in, in, in every situation. So, whether she traveled on her feet, by means of her feet, right? She walked somewhere. Or she traveled on the back of a riding beast, like a camel or a horse or a donkey, right? Or a donkey. Or whether she traveled by way of car, على السيارة, by way of a car, أو على الطائرة, 
or if she traveled by way of a plane, that regardless of the means and mode of transportation, if it is a travel, it's not permissible for her to go that distance. It's not permissible for her to go that distance, except that she has with her a mahram. Now listen, some people right now, listen to what they say. It's very important we understand this point. And Shaykh Nasr al-Din, Imam al-Albani, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he also mentions similar to this, uh, about the issue of women traveling by themselves on airplanes. Now, and this speech, and that speech of Shaykh Nasr, likewise that which was mentioned earlier from him, from Imam al-Albani, you can refer back to Sinsida al-Huda wa nur Naam, and you, you'll find, yani, you'll find, uh, this, what was mentioned. But here, على كل حال الشيخ يسأل لأن من الناس اليوم من يقول يسأل because you have from human beings you have from people right now those who say you have from the humans you have from people those who say إنها إذا سافرت بطائرة the issue was to go travel by a plane نعم ويودعها محرمها في المطار and there was one who was a محرم for her and he sent her off. He took her to the airport and he sent her off, right? وَيَسْتَقْبَلُهَا مَحْرَمُهَا الْآخَرْ فِي الْمَطَارِ الْآخَرْ And then there was another mahram who received her in the other airport. Now, so one mahram, he took her to departure and she got on a plane. Now, if he walk her to the gate, all that, yeah, and she got on a the plane. Then, there was another mahram in the other airport that was waiting for her when she came in at arrivals. That they say, as long as you do it like this, فَلَابَتْس فَلَابَتْس بِذَلِكَ It's no problem. Naam? Is this right? Huh? Shaykh Abani says no. The Mufti, Shaykh Abdul Aziz, al Shaykh, he says no. Likewise, Shaykh Salih and Fawzani say no. This is not, this is not, this is not permissible. The Shaykh says, Naqulu, we say to them, La, no, هذا لا يجوز, this is not permissible. لأنها سافرت بدون محرم, because she would have traveled without a محرم. You understand? Okay, you took her to the airport, right? She got on a plane. When she's on that plane, that duration and transit, is that not a travel? That is a travel. Is there a محرم with her during that time? No, there's no محرم with her during that time. So thus she has what? She has traveled without a mahram. You understand? The shaykh he says, لِأَنَّهَا سَافَرَتْ بِدُونِ الْمَحْرَمْ فَالنَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَيْنَ سَلَّمْ يَقُولُ لَا يَحِلْ لِمْرَأَ أَنْ تُسَافِرَ مَسِيرَ يَوْمَيْنِ إِلَّا مَعَذِي مَحْرَمْ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said it's not for women to travel the distance of two days except with a mahram. وفي الرواية يوم والليلة And in the narration, a day and a night. وفي الرواية أن تساف and to Safira, she travels, period. Without what? Without a mahram. But, the Shaykh, he says, سَوَاءٍ فِي الطَّائِرَ أَوْ فِي السَّيَّارَةَ أَوْ عَنَ الدَّابَ He said, regardless of whether it is in a, it is, is in a, 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 um, a plane, a car, or upon a riding beast. Huh? وَالْقِطَارْ And a, a train too. Huh? And a train too. وَالسَّفِينَ And a boat too. You got all means of transportations in there. Right? But yeah. For Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lam yafsil, wal illa mawjuda. You understand? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stipulated that the woman, she must travel with a mahram under all circumstances. Under all Circumstances. Naam. The Prophet Sallallahu he did not specify this or that. And the illa is mawjuda. And the, uh, uh, what would you say? And the cause, the cause for this rule is there. Is there. Naam. And, 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 and the reason for such, why she needs a mahram, is still present. It's still present. Well, fitna tukhsha alayha. Why? Because it is scared, it is feared for her that she will be put to trial, test, and tribulation. This is what is feared for her. That she will be put to a test. She will be put to a, through a calamity. Naam. 
وَهِيَ فِي طَائِرَ She'll be put in a calamity and she's inside of the plane. طيب, if she's in a plane and someone is harassing her, نعم, where's the mahram? If there's no mahram there, where's the mahram to deal with that situation? She's in a plane and whatever may come from fitna, who is there to deal with that situation? نعم. فالفتنة غير مأمونة. And fitna, it is not, يعني, no one is safe from fitna. So I don't want to say, oh, but you know, just a strong, independent woman. Yeah, she may be strong and independent. But what I mean, she can't be put through trial and test. She can't be put through a calamity. No one goes through a calamity because they want to or they choose it. You understand? The test comes. What, she, 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 she's above a test? No, of course not. No matter how strong and smart and independent and so on and so on, she still can be subjected to tests, to trials, to tribulations, temptations, so on and so forth. Even if she was inside of a plane, even if she was inside of a plane, the Shaykh, he mentioned, this is another thing of what Shaykh Al-Bani, he mentions, and he says that he had had other reports of, of individuals who had mentioned the same thing, uh, that, 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 that uh, this situation had happened to them, or to those who that they have known. The Shaykh, he says, Thumma, and then, if uh, an al-ta'ira, mathalan, i'taraha, ma ya'tariha, min al-taghir, masaraha, min al-taghir, masaraha, ila balad al-akhar, fa ma yastakbiruha fi balad al-akhar. He said, and, and then let's say, let's say for example, right? Let's say for example, what if the plane, whatever happens to the plane, happens to the plane. You know, something's happened to the plane. It's not working properly. Something is not good, whatever. You understand? So then what do they do? They have to divert to the nearest airport. Then diverting to that nearest airport may be an airport inside another land, another town, another country, so on and so forth. But So something happens to the plane, they get diverted. They have to an emergency landing in another, in, a, in, a, in, a, in another airport. And we know this happens all the time. And that may, and that may divert them into another country. You understand? The Shaykh he says, so who's going to who's going to receive her then in that other country? Who's going to receive her in that other country? You see, the Shaykh he says, فَلَا بُدْ فَلَا بُدْ and then Shaykh Al-Bani mentions the same, and he says that some women have been put to tests and calamities, and when these things happen, the plane gets diverted to another country, another place, and now she gets put through yani, yani some tests and some and some tribulations and some fitna because of that situation, and she had no mahram with her, right? So even this, yani, this understanding is not, it's not, it's not acceptable. That one mahram will, will, will send her off, another mahram will receive her. No. There has to be a mahram with her from departure in transit and also upon arrival. The Shaykh says, فَلَبُدْ مِنْ وَجُورِ الْمَحْرَمْ مَعَ الْمَرْأَةِ حَتَّى إِنَّ الرَّجُلِ He said it has to be a, 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 a man present with the woman during the travel and mahram. A mahram with the woman when she travels. He says, so much so that verily there was a man. Ja'a ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa qala ya Rasulullah. And he said, O Messenger of Allah. After hearing the statement from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That it's not permissible for a woman to travel. Who believes in Allah in the last day. He said that she has with her a mahram. When he heard that, the man went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, inni, uh, inni. Uh, he said, Verily, I have, I have been signed up for this particular battle, this particular you know, military expedition. I've been signed up for it. Right? Many, I've, I've already signed up for it. And verily, my wife, Khurajat, she left to make Hajj. She left to make hajj. So now look, making hajj is something that's great from the pillars of Al-Islam. You understand? From the pillars of Al-Islam. So, what happened? Did the Prophet Wasallam say, okay, that's fine, because she's going to do something that's great, then that's okay. No. The Prophet Wasallam, what did he say? Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, irujih. He said, go back. Fahujja ma'am ra'atik. He said, go back and make hajj with your wife. Then go back. You can't, you can't come on this battle. Leave. Go back. And make hajj with your wife. Naam. So the Prophet ﷺ, he commanded him what? To return and to make hajj with his wife. And this hadith has been collected by Imam al-Bukhari. Uh, inside of his uh, collection of authentic hadith. Min hadith Ibn Abbas. From the hadith of Ibn Abbas. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah.
So thus we see even in a great situation and for a great cause like Hajj, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see what the woman, she still needs a mahram. She still needs a mahram. Now, okay, this is the situation for Hajj. What about a woman want to travel to, I don't know, another country for university? So she go there by herself. And they say, oh, but study is important. Education is important. Yeah, education is important. But does that mean now it's so important that we disobey Allah? It's so important that we disobey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, of course not. It's not that important. You know, you get a, you get a, you get plenty of education in a halal manner, in a halal way. And if it's really that important to you, then you arrange that what mahram go with her. You arrange that a mahram go with her. Naam, if it's really that important. But yeah, this is just to reflect on. So now what about for in the case of vacation? A woman wants to make a vacation or something like that. She want to visit somebody from her family members or she want to go sightsee. That's more important than Hajj. This this Sahabiya, she needed a she needed a mahram to make the Hajj. So how this woman, this Muslim woman, is not going to need a mahram to go sightsee, or to go on vacation, or to go visit whoever, huh? Need a mahram. But important point, the Sheikh he says, "The Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam rada hadha al-rajul min al-ghazwa li yashaba imra'atahu fi al-Hajj." ويكون محرما لها. He says that the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he he made the man leave the military expedition so that he may accompany his wife to make the Hajj and so that he can be a محرم for his wife. فهذا الدليل على اشتراط المحرم في السفر المرأة في الحج أو لغيره. He said and this is a proof that the woman has to be uh, accompanied or that and this is a proof of the stipulation. Of a mahram being present for the tra- for when a woman travels, whether it's Hajj or other than Hajj, so the mahram is misstipulated. So therefore, a group of women they do not fulfill uh, and 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 uh, and complete the stipulation. They do not they do not cover it. So it has to be a mahram. A mahram has to be there. So why in kanat ma'a majmu'a imla? Whether she's going with a group of people or not, she can be with a group of people, but she still has to have there with her a mahram. ولهذا ذكر الفقهاء رحمهم الله تعالى and for this the great scholars of Islamic jurisprudence may Allah have mercy upon them they have mentioned أن من الشروط وجوب الحج على المرأة that from the conditions that make حج واجب upon the woman توفر المحرم is that she has to have a mahram. فَإِذَا لَمْ يَتَوَفَّرْ لَهَا فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهَا الْحَجِّ حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّرَ لَهَا الْمَحْرَمْ So if she does not have a mahram, then it is not obligatory for her to make hajj. It is not mandatory for her to make the hajj until she has a mahram. Until she has a mahram. Ma'am. And then the Shaykh Ta'ala, he gets into another issue from the issues that will safeguard the women from falling into the fitna. And again, our focus is on the women. Of course, one look at these issues, he can also see it from the flip side and say, well, I can see how this can benefit the men as well and help them from trials and tribulations. Ma'am. And that's true. But our women are precious. Our women are precious. Ma'am. So the focus is on protecting and safeguarding our women because they are they are precious, they are precious. Now more precious than any diamonds, than any precious gems, than any gold, silver, any precious metals. More precious than any amount of money. Our women, they are precious. They are precious. Now they are precious. So the Shaykh Allah Taala mentioning some reasons that will safeguard the women. From any type of harm, any type of trial, tribulation, so on and so forth. So the Shaykh, Hamdulillah Ta'ala, he gets into the next issue that will safeguard the women. Well, I can, but we'll save this until the next class, inshallah Ta'ala. Fa naktafi bihad al qadr. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. وجزاكم الله خيرا